This morning we are continuing our look at the coming of Christ. Uh, this is such a wonderful time of year, isn't it? Are you enjoying uh, looking ahead to the Christmas Eve and, and all that Christ did? And today we're going to talk about the shepherds and the angels. Okay, And uh, so this is a story we all know so well. But I want you to open your eyes today to some dimensions of this you may not have thought about. So the shepherds were out in the fields, and uh, the angels decide to come to them. Uh, they're sent by God. This is not plan B. We've talked about this. God planned this out from the foundation of the earth, that Jesus would come the way he would, that he would be born the way he would, that he, all of this would happen just as planned. This is God's plan, and it's so amazing. And the shepherds are out in the field. I'm sure the angels uh, had this conversation in heaven. We're going to go to the shepherds today. And it's going to scare them so badly. I tell you what, let's just send one angel to start with. And then after we kind of break the ice with them, then the rest of us will show up. And so they're out. Maybe the, maybe the shepherds were the only one that was upright then. You know, they're around the campfire. Maybe they're talking about Jesus. Who knows? Talking about God the Father. Uh, and anyways, uh, a shepherd, uh, they're out there and an angel appears. And it says they were sore afraid. Now in many of our yards, uh, I've noticed in Venice, there are lit angels. And uh, all the angels that you see are very kind of tame and uh, matronly. And not very scary, really. How many of you have ever seen an angel? In real life. Okay. I like to say to people, I married an angel. But, and she's angelic, but she's not really an angel, so you know that. Because angel is a whole another category of created being. One day, the angels uh, will be judged by us, the saints. Uh, when you die, you don't become an angel. That's a whole other category of creation. Uh, you become a dead saint if you're a follower of Jesus. Uh, but so anyways, the angels, uh, and, and what we always think of as angels are these beautiful women, but I honestly think angels are all men. Uh, all, the, all the angels that I know of in scripture, Gabriel, Michael, they're men. Now, I don't really know about the cherubs and the seraph that are around the throne. I don't know what that consists of. But the ones that come as messengers, they're men. Uh, actually, the word in Greek, angel, angelos, literally means messenger. And so Michael and Gabriel are usually the ones that are sent. Um, so here's my take on an angel. They are bad dudes. <laughs> no, no, they, they're the ones that God sent to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Uh, I would be surprised if they didn't all have like a giant sword on their belt. You know, these are uh, like the elite guard of God. So remember when uh, John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, is in the temple and, and Michael appears, and Michael or Gabriel appears to them, and uh, he questions him. And it's almost like the angel gets mad at him and says, I stand in the presence of God Almighty and you're questioning me? You're going to be uh, not able to speak now. So, uh, you know, they're bad dudes, I'm just saying. And uh, there's no wonder that if an angel appeared to you out of nowhere, it would be, you would be awestruck. And so they're sore afraid, is what the scripture says. And then the angel says, you don't need to be afraid. I'm not here to destroy you. He didn't say that, but I mean, it's kind of implied. Uh, for unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, he is Christ. That's so cool. And uh, it says that the glory of the Lord shone all around. So literally the word is Shekinah, the Shekinah glory of God. So because they serve in the presence of God, they get this glow about them. Have you ever talked to somebody that knows Jesus and they're just kind of a glow about them? They're just kind of, they're, they're on fire for Jesus. And you see, it, but multiply that times a hundred. And that's what Moses had when he would meet with God on the mountaintop. And he would come down and people said, 
Moses, would you please put a handkerchief over your face because we can't stand to look at you. You're glowing so much. And so imagine the angels who serve in the presence of God. They glow because of their presence with him. God is light. And in Revelation 21, it talks about how uh, in the end, we're going to have no need of a sun or light because God will shine and he is he will, he will be the light of eternity for us. Uh, he, is the, he is the light of the world, uh, Jesus is. Uh, so God emanates this light. And when you're with him, you, you, it, it sticks to you. You're like the moon reflecting the glory of God. And so the angel comes and the Shekinah glory of God glows. And then they say, peace be unto you. Shalom. Uh, shalom is the word. Uh, literally means peace. And this word uh, has a lot of importance to it. And uh, so in Israel, if you're ever going to go to Israel, or you're going to know uh, Jewish folks, learn the word shalom because it is both the greeting and the departure. So you say shalom when you meet. You say shalom uh, when you leave. It literally uh, in Hebrew means peace. Peace. Um, and it can either be peace between two entities, like a man and God, or possibly between two countries. Uh, it is true inner peace. It is calmness, safety. Uh, it's also used uh, in, in lots of ways as greetings. So I, I had a privilege of spending some time in Senegal uh, a few years back, and that's a heavily Muslim country. You know what the greeting is? Salim Malikum. And it literally means peace be on you. Peace rest upon you. And it's a derivative of the word shalom. Salem. Uh, peace. It, it's so central. Uh, it's, this is a word that we use all around the world. In Hawaii, it's aloha. In India, it's namaste. But it's peace. 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 Much more than peace. Shalom implies completeness. Wholeness. Health. Peace. Welfare. Safety. Soundness. Tranquility. Prosperity, perfectness, fullness, rest, harmony, the absence of agitation or discord, shalom, fully paid, peace. So they say, peace be on you. As a pastor, I often have people say, uh, Pastor, this is going on in my life. Will you pray for me? And I always try to take opportunity right then because I don't want to make an empty promise. I want to pray with them right then. And so I, here's a prayer that I often pray. Lord, you are the God of peace. You are the Prince of peace. Bring peace. Bring patience. Bring joy. Bring hope. Uh, God of peace. Shalom. May the shalom of God rest on you. Uh, and so the angels say, uh, the glory of God is shining. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. And then the the sky is filled with the hosts of angels. Do you know host literally means army? So when it says God, the Lord of hosts is talking about the God of armies. So imagine now this bad dude is there and now the whole army shows up and it fills the sky and they're singing. Have you ever heard a bunch of men sing? It's really moving. I remember my days with promise keepers and being in an auditorium of 6,000, 60,000 men singing uh, holy, holy, holy. It'll, it'll rock your socks out. And I just can only imagine what that was like. And today in the city of David is a Savior, is Christ the Lord. And they've been waiting for the Savior. True Jewish folks knew there was a Messiah coming. They were waiting for the redemption of Israel, for the hope of the world. And now he's come. So, uh, the shepherds, the shepherds were lowly uh, folks. We don't have shepherds so much. I mean, you know, we call pastor shepherd because you're all like sheep and, uh, you know, we're caring for our flock. And, but really, a shepherd who lives out in a field and takes care of the animals uh, is something we're not real familiar with. But uh, how wonderful a shepherd uh, gave his life to that. They were homeless, in a sense. They lived in the fields. They they were not the smartest of guys. They were not the cleanest of guys. Uh, they were the common man. They were the blue collar worker. Uh, how cool it is that the angels appeared to the shepherds. That's who they came to. 
You know, Jerusalem was only six miles north of Bethlehem. And so these guys out in the field, they were taking care of the lambs that would be the sacrifice in the temple. And so as people came on their way to Jerusalem, they'd have to get a lamb to take with them into the city to sacrifice, to pay penance for their sin. And so they would, these were uh, people that everybody was going to talk to, right? Everybody was going to see a shepherd on their way to Jerusalem because you got to get a lamb from the shepherds. So I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So the shepherds are, and so they, instead of just doing what we do religiously, like, wow, that was cool. Okay, I got to go shopping. Uh, you know, or whatever we do, we leave church and we don't think about it again. And it hasn't changed us. But these guys were changed. They were, they were dramatically changed. And they said, we've got to go to Bethlehem to see what the angels told us about. So they basically said this phrase, seeing is believing. I remember the first time I heard this phrase. I was just a kid. My cousin and I were with my grandmother. And my cousin thought we ought to get squirt guns. And that's what I'm talking about. And we said to my grandmother, we think they sell squirt guns in there. And she said, that's a hardware store. They don't sell squirt guns in there. And my cousin said, and this is the first time I heard it, oh yeah, well seeing is believing. Right? And so my grandmother took us in there. They sold squirt guns. No kidding. And we got squirt guns. But seeing is believing. And here's what the shepherds say. Seeing is believing. we got to go to Bethlehem. Now I want to talk about Bethlehem. Bethlehem, literally in Hebrew, Bethlehem, city of bread. City of bread. Lachem, bread. Guess who Jesus is? He's the bread of life. Which is a really amazing phrase in Hebrew because bread of life in Hebrew sounds like this. Lachem, lachaim. Right? Lachaim to life. Lachem, bread. So Jesus is this alliterative, amazing thing. Lachem, lachaim. I want you to say that with me, but listen. you got to do the chach. Are you ready? Ready? Lachem, lachaim. The bread of life. So listen, this is what's so amazing. Lachem Lachaim, the bread of life, is born in the city of bread, and they placed him on a plate, a manger, a feeding trough. Right? A feeding trough for animals. And so the bread of life is born in the city of bread, and he's offered up to all mankind on a plate. Does that blow you away? So, uh, you know, the enemy is the great imitator, right? So, like we sang, you're the lion of Judah. So, the, the enemy, he says, I'm like a roaring lion. He's not a lion, he's a snake, right? Jesus is the lion of Judah. He's always imitating God. So, here's what I think. Jesus is the bread of life, and when Jesus showed up, Satan became toast. Yeah? I'm telling you. And you know why? Because his kingdom's going to crumble. That's right. And I want to tell you, no matter how you slice it, Jesus is the Lord of all. And not only that, after he dies on the cross, he's going to rise. Are you with me? I know. It's okay. Hey, listen, I think God's got a great sense of humor, and I mean no disrespect for the Lord of all. I, I am so amazed that God builds into the story these little gems that I see every once in a while. I go, Lord, you're amazing. You're amazing. So they go to Bethlehem, and they see Lachem Lachem, Right? Uh -huh. And they worship him, they're transformed. And so this is what should happen when we see something that we've been told by God, we've read it in scripture, the Holy Spirit has impressed it on us, we need to be transformed. And so they worship. And then they go 
and they tell everybody. Everybody that comes to them that's on their way to Jerusalem and they're selling them the lambs and the shepherds are saying, these are lambs, but I've met the Lamb of God. He's in Bethlehem. He's going to save us. He's going to grow up as a Messiah. He's going to take upon himself the sins of the world. He's going to die in our place. I don't know if the shepherds understood all of this, but this is the story that God sent a Savior to die for us and to replace the punishment that should be on us, he took it all. And he died, he rose again. And, you know, there's an interesting thing that happens. So Jesus, resurrected from the grave, he's meeting with the disciples. And Thomas isn't there. But all the other disciples are there. But Thomas doesn't have to be there that day. Jesus walks through the door. He shows them who he is. They, he eats. He, he's with them. And then later, Thomas, this is why we call him Doubting Thomas. They say, Thomas, Jesus was here. He goes, I doubt it. Right? So they're Doubting Thomas. And so later, Jesus comes again. The disciples are meeting, probably in the upper room. Jesus walks through the door. He comes there. And Thomas is there. And he says, hey, Thomas, come here a minute. <laughs> yes, Lord. Jesus says, I want you to put your fingers in the nail prints. Go ahead, put your hand in my side. And Thomas falls on his face. You know what he says? My Lord and my God. Now if Jesus is who we think he is, he would have had to tell the truth there. No, Thomas, I'm just like you guys, if that's who he was. But because it's true that he is not only Lord, but God. Here's what he says to Thomas. Thomas, blessed are you. Having seen me, you believed. But listen, blessed are all of those who are going to come after you. They won't see me, but they're still going to believe. Blessed are they as well. So here's what I want to say to you. Seeing is believing, but as followers of Jesus, you know how it really works? Believing is seeing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> this Christmas, do you believe that God sent his son to tell us about who he was, to demonstrate the glory of God, the Shekinah, the peace of God, the Shalom, and to give us hope and a future, and then to, after telling us all about who God was and what he wanted of us, demonstrating his authority by the miracles he did to go to the cross for us and die for us. He took upon himself our sins. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to our, his own way. But the Lord has laid on him, Jesus Christ, the iniquity of us all. And John the Baptist said when Jesus went by, Behold, the Lamb of God, he takes away the sins of the world. And that's what Jesus did for us. And I want to tell you something. That's the story of Christmas. It's not about the shopping or Black Friday or Cyber Monday. It's not about free shipping. It's not about uh, wonderful food. It's not about family, although those are all wonderful things. It's about Jesus, who came as a little baby, he grew up, he suffered, and he died, and he rose again. And he, in rising from the dead, he opened the gates of heaven for us and said, all of you who will believe, you will see eternity with me. That's what Christmas is all about. Merry Christmas. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the truth of a little baby who came to save the souls of men and of women and of boys and girls. And how you loved us so much that you were willing to be Lachem Lachaim, born in Bethlehem, born in a feeding trough, offered up to the world. Uh, whoever takes you in will never die. 
Lord, how amazing, how wonderful to celebrate this faith in Christ because, Lord, we believe, and because we believe, you show us the truth. We thank you for that in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.